Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're going to talk about the phases of behavior analytic interventions. So an intervention is where we determine this behavior we need to change. We do some assessment on it. You'll learn all about assessment in the assessment section. And then we implement an intervention. And this goes through a couple phases. And a lot of this Again, if you continue on, this is all your research methods, because it's also how we do research. But it's how we're going to kind of determine if our intervention worked or not. I'm going to go over four phases, baseline, intervention, generalization, and maintenance. We use line graphs to show this. You'll learn more about that in the graphing section. I kind of feel this section should be more at the end, but I am trying to follow the task list and it is earlier on. So phase one baseline before intervention. So before we intervene or try to do anything, we take data on the behavior and I'm gonna have an example with us. So let's say we have a child in a classroom and this child calls out repeatedly. The teacher's like, it's really hard. Can we do an intervention on that? And you're like, okay, we'll try. And a BCBA supervises you and you do some assessment and you observe this child five days and you determine that in one hour period, they're calling out maybe three times in that hour. Okay. And so that's your baseline. So right now we know they call out three times an hour. Sometimes the environment is okay with it, and sometimes the environment is not. And in this case, the teacher is not okay. She wants to intervene. Your supervisor determines that the best thing to do is to reinforce the child raising their hand instead of calling out. And so that's your intervention. Baseline is just taking the data on the behavior before anyone does anything. It allows us to know whether or not our intervention is working. If we don't do that, we have no idea if our intervention worked or not. The second phase would be applying that differential reinforcement. Every time the child, you explain it to the child, like if you raise your hand, you're going to get a token. After five tokens, you get to pick something from the treasure box and they get all excited about it. You put a little note on their desk too, which would be a visual prompt. If you have something to say, raise your hand. And then you go into intervention and you continue to take data on how many times the child calls out and how many times the child raises their hand. So this is the phase where you implement. I explain to the teacher what you're doing, you take data and you continue when you know, over a couple days, every time the child earns those five tokens, they get their treasure box thing. We continuously collect data on it, but this is all the applying treatment. And then the RBT's role is to kind of take data, make sure that the teacher's implementing it, make sure the classroom's implementing it, you might be implementing it, and this could all go on in a home in any setting. So here's some examples of ba like the baseline data I gave you. So day one, they called out nine times, day two, eight, day three, 10, day four, eight, day five, nine. So you figure that out. Okay, so then at the end of your intervention, it diminishes to zero. So the kid's no longer screaming out. So it worked. You know that because you took continuous data and you took that baseline data and it was at like, we'll say eight or nine call outs. And now we're at zero. Maybe they do one one day, but zero most days. And they were raising their hand the whole time. Yay, it worked. Good job. And you have proof it worked as well. Generalization is we're going to move it into a different setting. It depends on what you're doing, maybe with different people. If the teacher goes out for a week for some reason and they have a sub, you might go in to make sure that it continues with the sub and doesn't change. You might go into the art class or the music class to make sure it's working in that class. So in generalization, you take data in a different setting to see if it worked and see if we need to intervene now in that setting. If it worked, great. And then you move on to maintenance. For example, my call out doesn't really work at playground. I don't know that he probably in cafeteria is probably allowed to call out. But we can say this is, we can say classroom, library, and home. How many times does that child call out? So you take data in different settings. Our last setting is maintenance. So you go away. 
but the intervention continues. Maybe you make the tokens harder. So he has to raise his hand all week long to earn his treat at the end of the week. You slowly phase that out. And then you go away for a while and you come back and you take data to make sure it's still happening. You make sure that it continues over time, even when the intervention is reduced or eliminated. So we always come back and do that little maintenance probe. We use intermittent reinforcement. If you go down to less reinforcement, you might incorporate the behaviors into daily routines, encourage independence from prompts and reinforcement. So we're going to remove some of the intervention and then come back and make sure that it's still working. Your role in these processes is baseline. You would be probably collecting data on the behaviors, avoiding doing anything because baseline it's very important that nothing's happening. The intervention, you'll probably be implementing the intervention in a lot of cases, taking data on it, and then like reporting anything to your supervisor. Generalization, you might be moving into different environments and implementing the intervention and taking data on it to make sure it works. And then maintenance, you would be the one to go back and do that. Your supervisor can do all of this. It will depend on the relationship, your hours working and their hours. They also supervise you through all of that. So you get a lot of instruction and you're told exactly what to do. Okay, thank you. I'll see you in the next module.